it feels like Like this world's gone crazy Grandpa Take me back to yesterday When the line between right and wrong Didn't seem so hazy Something people kept Not just something they would say Did families really bow their heads to pray Did daddies really never go away Whoa, whoa, grandpa Tell me about them good old days Taking my picture. Yeah. Uh, so you grew. You, you grew told up. Them to, told them to go up to lake down there. Down by uh, down by Chapel Hill. Huh? Down by Chapel Hill. It was a rough town. It was a rough place to grow up in. No, I ain't kidding you. See, we lived over. My uncle and my dad and everything grew up and owned a place. Over from a Bartonsville, what's called Knob Creek area. Uh -huh. That's where they were born and raised at and grew up at. And he up and sold that place. And he bought that up a farm up our Chapel Hill. And we bought that. And oh my goodness, it was all grown up and nobody had took care of it for years. And if it was a nice farmer, you know, after you get it all. And we stayed there till we got it all. And we'd take. And we had that all turned into a pasture. Mm -hmm. Read horses and cows and things in there on, whenever I left there. But I walked from Chapel Hill there, where you go up over into the lake, mm -hmm. up on top of the hill, and right up here on this farm, and dig post holes all day, and walk by. That was here on the ridge? Right over here. Wow. Right across the road. <coughs> How long did it take you to get there? I leave about 4.30 in the morning, start walking, and I had to be up here at seven o'clock over the ward. Mm. And that old man, he was uh, partly paralyzed from an army shot in the army. And he was a, uh, I don't know, he was some kind of a leader in the army. I don't know what he was. And he couldn't already understand him talking, you know, he's 
kind of drag it out and stuttered a lot in his talk. But he was a good man. I mean, he'd do anything for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I walked from Chapel Hill and dig post holes all day and walked back to Chapel Hill. 23 miles. Mm -hmm. I made it for many times in the car. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, wow. Yeah, you sure get it a long day now. They can take post hole diggers and dig post holes. Yeah. And I put post holes, I'd be building a fence all the way around his mm -hmm. farm out there. Now that was uh, across from where Ugi lives? Yeah, right there. Mike Arthur's owned it. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. You never truly know I've lived here. Uh, yeah. But I'll tell you one thing How that old? I didn't know, and Dr. Toots, mm -hmm. and Melanie, mm -hmm. I mean not Melanie, but uh, Rita and uh, Maddie, and David over here underneath that big tree. And I stopped there one morning, and I said, what are you girls doing? Cat and pickles. Cat and pickles? Yeah, this pickles. And what it was, them are big long things off of uh, poplar trees. Uh -huh. They were taking them and playing like kids, uh, cat and poplar, uh, cat and pickles. And they kept truly there and all busy, you know, because they lived here and no other car, uh -huh. house or anything they ever built up through here, except my cars. And anyway, why, uh, I'll tell you, we had a lot of fun here, and I got knowing Toots, and I got knowing Dolly, and that's how come I stayed here with Dolly. And mm -hmm. They wouldn't let me walk back and forth. They made me a bedroom upstairs in the old walk house down there. and said, you ain't walking back and forth. You go home one Sunday or something. So that's what I got to do. But, uh, how old was you at that time? I was probably, I'd say between late 17s up mm -hmm. to, you know, about 20 some years old. Mm -hmm. I think I'd done it for about three or four years. And I put a, he had the 80 acres in there and that was all in his, uh, like a, more or less, his cattle grazed in it, he called it, his grazing barn, our farm. And he turned his calves and cows in there and sold them. Mm -hmm. He'd raise calves all the time and sell them. And Frank, Timmy wanted to go down here. And Frank, he was over the cattle. He had to take care of the cattle and take the calves take them to sale bar and sell them or, you know, sales. Mm -hmm. But uh, and it, we all had had our fun, you know, quite a bit of mm -hmm. interesting thing to do. And he also had an orchard out here on the ridge too, didn't he? Uh, did he no. Do that? Now, I had one I rode, her to last. I raised her and my Uncle Homer, and he had a horse. He bought a sale barn, and they run her through the sale, and... Uh, I don't know. She was kind of a, a wildish head horse. You get in a horse she was at, and she wanted to run from you, you know, get away from you. And uh, I don't know how come Homer, my dad liked to have a fed whenever they bought her. He said, you ain't got any business with that horse. That horse is crazy. And he said, hey, he said, I want trees. I, want, I like that little horse because she's pretty. <laughs> he took her to her down Knob Creek, and she had a little Maricose horse. Mm -hmm. And he gave that to me whenever I was a kid, mm -hmm. and let me have her, and I kept her till she died, yeah. But boy, she was a pet, I mean, I, I had a pretty well rotten, you know, playing around with her, riding her and things. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, me and her rode at our house from Chapel Hill over here and back and forth, or whenever she got big enough, I could put her saddle on her riding. Mm -hmm. And the boy, I'll tell you, what we went through when we was kids, it was unbelievable. But, I like to kill myself, old, when I was in high school. I'd go to school through the day, and soon school was out, I'd go in, and Mom, she'd always have me a dinner bucket fix, or supper bagel, she called it, and had one of these sure old lard buckets, you know, you carried lard in, mm -hmm. and that's why she had my dinner fixed in for her supper at nights. I didn't eat at the house, I ate out in the fields. And we had an old John Deere, or they did down there, an old John Deere tractor on steel wheels. And that's what we uh, used all the time. But it was a good tractor back at that time period. And uh, I stayed down there two or three o'clock in the morning. And the headlights on that. Had two old beam headlights and you wouldn't shine for here the walls are ahead of you. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I was out there in that field many, many hours at night, two mm. or three, four o'clock in the morning. Be out there by myself, mm -hmm. plowing. But, uh, and that was down in Knob Creek? No, that was over Lake like Merle. Okay. That's where the lake is now. Yeah. You know, you go to the bottom of the hill, mm -hmm. and all that field back in there where them houses is, mm -hmm. 
all of that in through our we far down by the dam or the uh, yeah, causeway dam, all the way down to the spillway yeah yeah and we it's all underwater all, now oh yeah all underwater yeah and anyway why well, I got hung up down there one night, and my dad, I, I know he was going to whip me at night, but, you know, he didn't know what to do. He just, I mean, he was just out of it. And he told me when he left there at night, and I was plowing down there, and it had, it had a two plow full behind the tractor, mm -hmm. you know. And he told me, he said, son, stay away from that wet spot over there. Because you get in there, you'll hang it up, and you'll not get out. And... I don't know, I guess I just kind of, you know, rushing. They were way up toward one or two o'clock in the morning. And I went down through there, and I got over the phone I thought I was going to. And boys, I hung the right high wheel up. And I thought, oh my gosh, Dad will whip me, and I'll never get out of there. So I went out there, and I mean, I'd done everything I thought about doing. And I carried rock out of the creek down there, and I had a giant, great big old jack we had there. And that farm down there, it had a barn. Oh my, this here house looked like a, nothing besides that barn. Mm -hmm. And it had two great big corn cribs off the side of it. And he had all kinds of stuff. Because mm -hmm. he was a part owner. You know where Harrisburg is, over on the highway? Yeah. You know all them quarries? Mm -hmm. He was part owner of them. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was a little shell shocked, and like I say, and he's out of it. I mean, he was in bad shape. But he couldn't walk. He had to crawl all the time with the chair, or walk with the chair. But the old man, I mean, he was good to you. And, uh, but he told us, he said, everything you raise, it's yours. Put her in the barn, sell it, get rid of it, I don't care what you do with it. But it ain't doing us any good, that field's just sitting over empty. Mm -hmm. Farm them, and we did. But oh my gosh. What'd y'all grow down here? What'd you plant? Down where? Down in, what'd you plant? What'd you plant in the bottoms? Oh, we planted uh, corn, soybeans, oats, stuff like that, mm -hmm. yeah. And that brought, brought you in pretty good money, or? Yeah, we, we made, uh, we sold a lot of corn and hay, mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, our neighbor over across from her, and his name was Sturt, and he didn't have no kids, his wife couldn't have kids, and he, he owned a big farm over there, and he, uh, I don't know, somewhere or other down through the farm, he donated that farm over there, and he'd have us come over there, and uh, he'd cut hay, and had me and my brother break it, mm -hmm. and he'd come along, and his wife, she bailed it. She had them tractors, she'd do the bailing, and oh my, the hay we sold for everybody. We sold hay at the Blump and Sale Barn mm -hmm. and sold to different people out. And, uh, but I don't know the hours I put in. It's just like somebody the other day said, how in the world did you ever live to be as old as you are and still doing what you're still doing? I said, hard work. Yep. I said, that's just like it. They grew up in it. You mm -hmm. stayed that way. Never let up. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but so you think you honored your mother and father? Do I? Honored your mother and father? That's what yep. the Bible says. He says uh, that was the first commandment with promise, that honor your mother and father and you'll have a long life. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. yeah, we sold my dad. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Everybody around Chapel Hill, Bartsville, they come over by hay. Mm -hmm. And uh, glad to get it, you know. Well, that made him some good money. Yeah. And that's why we, we played, I mean, got a private barn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we built a big log horn of our barn back there. And this tree, our farm had uh, what's called chestnut oak trees on it. And the, uh, there used to be a place down here at Bedford. As you go into Bedford, and it used to be, and it was Moses down there now, uh -huh. owned that place. Okay. And they would buy what's called mine bars. For mine prop, for when they were putting that, line, I mean, quarries in or a coal company down there in Kentucky, and he and they bought the timber off of us for mine bars, mm -hmm. and we sold them that all the time. But I'll tell you, 
We had it. My dad, he was pretty sharp. He, he was smart enough. He knows how to make money. That's one thing I can say about the man. Well, he growed up that way, you know. Yeah. So you, you met Mamma when you was probably 17 years old or something, and you started staying over here? When when did you marry her? Yeah, uh, I, I stayed over here, of course, like I said, mm -hmm. ever truly. And just one thing I never had to do. I never had to pay for a meal. They always fed you good, huh? When your dinner was ready, hey, somebody would be at you for dinner, either that or they'd bring you to get your dinner. Mm -hmm. And I just, many times, and I helped him over a lot, a lot though, and I just, it wasn't a while, we'd have extra hay or something, you know, somebody would ask for it, and never come and got it, and uh, he just kind of marked that off, sold, you know, and I'd bring it over here, and I'd sell it to ever, mm -hmm. just practically, you know, just, I think maybe a dollar a bale or something mm -hmm. like that, and that got ever milk cows and things, too, and it helped him out quite a bit. Yeah. But boy, I'll tell you, Everett truly was just like my dad and mom told me, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And you and Toots were very close, weren't you? Do I? You and Toots were very close when you was young. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And well, that's, that's how you met Mamaw through Toots? Uh, yeah, well, mm -hmm. that's why I got where I'm at today, I think. Mm -hmm. But, uh, man, I made good money whenever I drive that dirt truck. Mm -hmm. But... Everything that I made extra, and uh, I had the 17 cemeteries, even Crown Hill and Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. I would take stuff up there and dump it. Yeah. It's like Monument Foundations mm -hmm. or Monument Church, that, you know, Monument Thorn. Mm -hmm. I'd go in there and they paid me cash money. Wow. Everywhere I went, it was cash money. That's the only way I would deal with it. I said, now if you got cash, fine. If you don't have, I ain't doing it. Mm -hmm. But the company there didn't know much about it, I don't think. Or if they did, they never complained about it. Mm -hmm. They never, never one time they ever mentioned to me hmm. about, you know, going to a cemetery or, or somewhere and unloading old stuff. But, yeah, it's like I say, that $7,000 mom had down there, and I never even signed a check for it. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know I had it until they called. Mm -hmm. Said they had to clean that record, you know. They called me that morning about 9 30, 10 o'clock, and said, You need to come to Bedford Banks since you've got something out here for you. And I thought, Uh oh. What in the world have I went in dead burn? I didn't know. <laughs> and, uh, but I got down there, was I surprised? Mm hmm. When I went in there, there's three people sitting there at the desk and said, Are you ready for it? I said, Well, I. I guess I am, because I ain't going to be any better off than what I am sitting here. Mm -hmm. And she come out there, and she had a box, and she had cash money in it. She said, look at here, what you got? I said, oh, my gosh, what in the world is that? And that's where Mom had put in the bank. She did a lot of times. I wouldn't even cash checks. She'd mm -hmm. take it down there and cash it. I didn't know how much I did. Yeah. But that's how we paid for the house here. Mm -hmm. That's where it's at today. Yeah. Well, it's like I told the kids. Maybe I didn't do a lot for my kids and get them where I got them today, but I hope after I'm dead and going that they'll enjoy, if they sell this, it's between the three kids, like mm -hmm. I told you. It's between Nancy and Bob, between Melanie and Ron, and Bill and Nancy. Bill and uh, Janet. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, if they ever sell it, they can divide that up, equal it three ways. And I said, somebody's going to make a little bit of money there. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's their money, and they can do whatever they please with it. Mm -hmm. But I can sold this. I can still sell it. I can sell this place to probably in the next week. Mm -hmm. This guy over here back behind me, he wants that all go his place so he can build more on the ridge out through there. He owns all that back in through there. And uh, he talked to me long ago when I had that piece made for my lawnmower. He want to know, say, when are you going to sell me your farm over there? So I got 18 acres over there, and he wants that to go his. And I said, I spurred my part, I'll never sell it myself. I said, my kids get it. That's up to them, however they do with it. Mm -hmm. And he said, boy, I said, don't you ever let that get away from me, because we want that so we can build more boring buildings over there. They want to build race car motors. Mm -hmm. That's what they are in hmm. food. Yeah. Whatever mom, I mean, whatever the kids does here with the place, that's where I'm dead and going, it's up to them. Mm -hmm. It's divided in three different angles, different. And I said, now, 
I said, they may sell it and let one of the grandkids live in it. I said, that's up to them. I said, it's their home. It's not mine no more. I got my home up at the cemetery. And I said, that's my place I'll be, and I'll not need this. Mm -hmm. And I said, whatever they do with the place here, it's up to them to do what they want to do with it. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I don't know. I've had the amount she complained about two or three different times. Well, you ought to sell it, get rid of it now, and get your money and use it. I said, I don't need the money. I got money, and I don't have a lot, but I got enough. I, you know, if I want something, hey, I go to the bank, go maybe a hundred, two, couple, three, four hundred dollars if I need it. And I said, that's the way I keep myself. And I, I got tickled the other day. And anyway, I think it was one of Bill's kids, and we was up there, and uh, I had to go to Bedford and we bought, bought some stuff down there. You got to the cash register, you know, you got yourself now, all right, the gadget stuff. I don't even know how to do that. And it was there, and I opened my bill full up, and I had a uh, hundred dollars. And I got it in the, my pocketbook, and I got a band around it, so I know how much it's in. And I went down there, and I pulled that out the other day, and I paid the cash rate, you know, for it. And the voice chanced like they had to pay it. I said, how in the world? You get you afraid to carry that much money with you? I said, well, my money, if I lose it, I guess it's my loss. Mm -hmm. I said, I hate to lose it, but, you know, I really want the kids to get it, but I said, I take pretty good care of it and keep it all the time. <laughs> but, uh, well, when I drive the truck, I always carried extra money with me, so if I didn't need to go home or something, you know, maybe I could get some more where I could get somebody to come get me. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's always planning ahead. Yeah. Think, think ahead. If something happened to you, well, how can I move to do this? Mm -hmm. How can I go about it, doing something that I can make sense out of it and get help mm -hmm. and go on with it? Yeah. That's the way I. That's the way I was growing up. When I was getting mm -hmm. school, and I know my teacher, an old Miss Wally, and her husband was a mail carrier all over Chapel Hill all through here back at that time and uh, we had to walk the mailbox pick up our mail by 10 and uh, I always tried to meet him or pick up our mail you know every time he's come through and his uh, wife was my teacher's school the grade school in Chapel Hill that was and a one, one room schoolhouse yeah a mm -hmm. one room schoolhouse up there and I was a janitor there mm -hmm. and my dad he furnished the wood and I built the forest every morning I walk down there, and I walk up there and build bars. I had bars going there, two stoves, two wood burn stoves like mm -hmm. this one. And had to, you know, I'd get there about an hour and had the stoves going. And I got trustees paid me pretty good, you know, for a kid back then. I thought it was good money. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, I think a lot of it. It's when you grow up and how your parents treat you and, mm -hmm. and make you do. I think that has a very, very big thing to do. Yeah. And that's just like Bobby right here. Mm -hmm. Whenever I was working in the vault business, I did graves extra. Mm -hmm. And I took him one night with me, and Mom <laughs> liked to have a pet. It. And he was just a very, very small boy. Uh -huh. And he slept on a blanket. And I had a pickup truck. And I had backup lights that I had them hooked up to the tailgate and some tail lights, <laughs> and it shot down in the grave, and that's how I dug the graves. So you could see, yeah. Yeah, and he sleep her on that blanket. Mm -hmm. And and I was aggravating her one morning. Oh boy, did I get her stirred up in a hurry. And I said, you know what? I said, I've done in her and I throwing dirt out. And I said, after a while, I thought, well, I better check on Bob, see where Bob got off to. And I said, I got up in his blanket and he was gone. I said, I couldn't find it. Oh, man, did I say something wrong? I thought she was going to slap the daylights out of me. She grabbed me and shook me. In fact, kid had gone and him down on that lake. It was down there, what's it called? Uh, down there at uh, the, where the park, I mean, where the uh, dam is. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was close to that. Said that kid got over and got drowned. And said, "Oh, it's a boy. There ain't enough room here for both of us." Mm -hmm. And I said, "No, mom." I said, "Quite down." I said, "He went out there," and I said, "He laid down, 
if I had the driver's seat in the truck and laid down across the back seat back there. That truck had a, you know, where you let the seat down. Uh -huh. And I said he was sound asleep out there. And he <laughs> turned you, scared me to death. <laughs> Hard work ethic rubs off, don't it? It rubs uh, off. On a man, when a, when a son watches his dad work hard, and that you rubs know, off. I went work down there at Spring Mill State Park. Mm -hmm. Down there, the, my man, I mean, uh, you know, uh, Ground Mule run that truck of Chris Wheel. Mm -hmm. And the boy I worked with her, Dave Williams, he was my boss in there. And Dave, and I met Dave different times, you know, around different places. And me and him wasn't just a, the friends we know each other, kind of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was down there, and they was a man and a woman got burnt to death in the house. And they would be buried in that cemetery down there, down there at the park. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, and Dave called me. He said, Errol, he said, I got you a job. And I said, well, what in the world have you got now? And I was sitting funerals in, you know, I mean, just the boss and just burning people. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't digging no graves at that time. He said, we want you to come down here and go out there in the cemetery and dig in two graves. Mm -hmm. He said, they told me what it was, you know. So I went out there and Dave and uh, the guy was over the whole park, you know. They, took a, one of their little trucks they had down there, did our truck, we went out there. And he marked it all off. He said, here, where's it go? And I went over and I dug both them graves in a day and everything, and I went back, I filled the graves and everything. And boy, they liked it. They said, well, I'll tell you, you've done a good job, we're gonna keep you at it. And I dug graves over there. I don't have any. Mm -hmm. Every time to get a grave to go in there, and I don't know, I buried quite a few people in the old cemetery. Mm -hmm. But that's how I got a good job down there at that park hole. Mm -hmm. I was my own boss in there, and I was a DNR in there all the time. And I done just about, like Cole later, I done about anything I wanted to do, you know. And they never, I don't know, I never did have them come around and say, you had to do this, you ain't doing that right, you know. And I'd go down there and i open up the building, i close every building at nights. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of, you know, just, well, you get used to doing things like that, and you, you just kind of like to do it and get it over with, get out of mm -hmm. it. Uh, well, speaking of Spring Mill, that uh, one of those cabins used to be Great Grandma Truly's, right? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. She owned that type of tavern up there, yeah. I mean, yeah. That, was yeah. it the gardener's house? That, gardener's mm -hmm. house, yeah. Now, how'd you get those logs? You had them threw down in the hauler, didn't you? Yeah. After uh, you tore down the cabin? Yeah, I took that there part piece by piece, take, you know, part sections out, and number them how they went, and I numbered them and marked, you know, how they went to get back together. And whenever I got to build it, hey, just go up there, fit this mark with that mark, and you read and everything. Mm -hmm. I take the petitions like that out and then mark them, and I take that mark on there, you know, mm -hmm. section so and so, so and so. And I went down there, and me, and, uh, I forget that there guy's name was a carpenter down at that time. He had a couple other guys working with him. Mm -hmm. And we built that in two days. Wow. Yeah. Had it up and the people were using it. They said, how in the world you got done that? And I was one put the fire pit in. I, I concreted all that fire pit mm -hmm. so they could cook in there and everything. Hmm. Yeah, Dave, he was, I mean, he was a, uh, a lot of people kind of frowned on him. They didn't like Dave a lot, but you know he was good to me. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Dave was. I remember Dave. I like Dave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dave was a swell guy to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I got a reward right up there, and tell me, I was a uh, a volunteer, dead R, mm -hmm. for years and years. I think I got. To, it was eight or nine hundred dollars with that. Whenever they get passed that out to me, hmm. yeah, yeah. Dave come over there and we in that little shack there. You go in underneath that basement light. Mm -hmm. I went there at one noon hour and they was all in there that morning. And I was in there. And they said, "Hey, get your chair and sit down. We got something to give you here." And I went over there. And here come Moretta. 
And she said, I got something I want you to have. And if we all passed it out to you, and this is all yours. Went over there, and it was in a bag. He said, open it up. I opened it up and had that in it. He said, now, he said, I'm going to finish it. Go ahead and unwrap it. And I unwrapped that in order to have cash money laying in there. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, my God. You guys, I said, I don't want that. He said, it's yours. It's your money. You pocket at that, put it up. But one or two guys in there, I had a study, got the notion, and they got cheating on that money. Mm -hmm. They'd sell cornmeal, dollar bag. Okay, you guys show me a bag, somebody come in, I want three bags. Hey, they run that to a cash register, maybe two bags, one bag, all the rest of them. Mm -hmm. So, they didn't know I was in the village, or didn't even know I was around that day. And I walked in down there, and this guy, and I heard two or three different times, and uh, you feel the leather man over there, Dennis, they call it. And he told me, he said, Harold, he said, that one guy in here, I think maybe that, some of that money is going to him, going to his father, not going to the guy's house. And I said, boy, if I catch that, he ain't going to be here long. I said, that belongs to the park. I said, that's how to keep the park going like it did. He said, well, he said, you better watch him pretty close. So I went in there one morning. Well, I went upstairs. And I opened up a place up there where I could see the cash register. And I know we would had people coming in there, and there's three car loads, bus loads, mm -hmm. of, uh, I don't know, they were students uh -huh. from somewhere. And they come in there and watch us grind cornmeal. And some of them would buy one bag, two bags, you know, take a bag. And they gave him money I had never seen going to the cash register. Hmm. So after they all left, there was four or five of them in there. I had Cole Adam and Juanita, and Dave, and I think it was another boy or two there. I don't know who it was. I know Cole Adam was one of them. And boy, she liked to have the pet Cole Adam did. And she called him a theft. And that's his nickname. Theft. Mm -hmm. TJ. TJ Waters. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was a blacksmith over there. Mm -hmm. So anyway, come in there, she said, I've got something here I want you to look at, watch. Well, I did, and uh, Coletta and Moretta were standing there up there with me, and we were watching it. Instead of him taking the money, and they gave her cash, he took it down the shirt pocket, took it down the shirt pocket. Mm. And then they went to the cash register. And she said, you know he's taking money from here. And he said, that's, and she said, that's not fair. I said, well, it was easy for them to get, though, wasn't it? They said, yeah. I said, man, said, they shouldn't do that. I said, well, shouldn't do it, but don't do a different thing. I said, what can I do about it? They said, well, I said, the only thing you can do is put a stop to it. Of course, I was a dead R down there at that time, too, mm -hmm. just like Cole Red is now. And I said, well, I said, I can put a stop to it. So went down there. And the woodworker up there, and he come down there, and he said, I want to hear this. And he said, what are you going to tell him? I said, I, I'm just going to be mild about it. I don't care. I said, I ain't going to cause no trouble. I'm just going to tell him what's right. What? Well, the boy said, I don't know if I can be that calm about it or not. And I said, well, I said, what they stole off the park here, that's their money. That's mm -hmm. their people. You know, that's their doing. So... But boy, I'll tell you, he didn't stay there long. Mm -hmm. They got rid of him that day. Wow. Yeah. Now you was a you milled down there for a long time, didn't you? Done what? Down you was a miller there for a while there, yeah. wasn't you? Oh yeah. Uh, do you remember anything? Any information about the mill? Like the size of the millstone or anything that they used? Done what? Huh? The the size of the millstone? Oh yeah, yeah. I built a lot of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I made. Uh, all kinds of these sleds, mm -hmm. like I got in here. Mm, you and got the, didn't you, the woodworking? Woodworking, The yeah, sawmill on the side? Yeah. Did you get that going? Yeah. I know there for years it didn't even work. Yeah, oh uh, yeah. Oh, I, I'm telling you. Well, whatever his name was, that, that guy was over the park at that time. What was his name? I can't call it offhand. It wasn't Dave, it was a guy that lived down there. Isn't it awful for get old and forget names that way? Yeah. You know the house that you come down there and you go into the entryway and that house sitting right there off the road? 
the one on the left? Yeah. Yeah. He wanted me to move into that. Oh, he did? He said, there's your home. Move in it. It's yours. Do what you want to do. It's your home. You won't have to drive back and forth. And I said, man, I don't want to leave my place. And he tried to get me to move in there and live there. And he said, you'd be right here all the time. And I said, that's my trouble. That damn thing come up that I had to find out. I said, did you get under me? Asked me how did that, what was that? And I said, I don't want to be that responsible. But, yeah, I got to, down there. I don't know, I had a neighbor down here, and he was a DNR. And he was over there all this, too far straight through here, all the way through here, across the Harden Ridge. Mm -hmm. And he kept after me, kept after me, and he said, I want you to be my buddy as a DNR buddy. And this year you'll be just like a DNR. If you need to go out and arrest somebody for deer hunting, poaching, killing deer out of season, he said, hey, you're a DNR. You're a DNR man. I said, I don't want that job. And buddy, he took me down there one day and I just went to town with him. And we went down there to the DNR office right there on 37 right across my big restaurant. Mm -hmm. be down there. Well, still down there. And he said, I want you to go in here and sign up. And I went in there and they threw out some papers and said, sign these. I said, I ain't signed nothing. I don't know what they're for. <laughs> hey, you're a DNR. You're the same thing as he is. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, I said, you get in a lot of trouble with that. And Danny Joe, when he took a police job down there, mm -hmm. oh man, me and him went to Knob Creek one night. I'll tell you, you did not get into trouble down there. I didn't get into trouble, but it scared the heck out of me. Mm -hmm. We went down there, and a guy was making dope. Hmm. He had a big shed down there, and he had it like a M1 part. He had it where he could, uh, I don't know, it wasn't a modern, I'd call it, but it had a sink in there, and it had LP gas that he cook on, and he make it dope. Mm -hmm. That's what he was making for people coming and buying it off of them, mm -hmm. and he was selling it. Well, Danny Joe come over here, and I, Danny was living with Rita then. And we lived here in the, in the house trailer at that time. He said, Harold, come go with me. And I said, and he had his uniform on. And I had one here, but I didn't have mine on at that time. And he said, you come go with me. Get that uniform on and go with me. I said, man, I don't want to go with you. Where are you going, Daddy Joe? He said, we're going to Knob Creek. I said, you go down there, you'll allow get shot too. I said, I don't want to go down there. Yeah, come go with me. I done called, I didn't know it from the, down here at the Dean Hall office, that you'll be where you'll be, and you'll be with Daddy Joe, and you'll be safe. So if you need us, Hey, you got a phone on your shoulder? Use it. That's mm -hmm. what I'm And I said, oh my. And I said, I'm afraid to go down there. And I had to. And I went down there with him. And we went in, and this guy's back there, and he had a big pot. And he had that full of dope. Mm. And so, Daddy Joe, he just picked the phone off his shoulder, and picked it up here. This is so, 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 send help here to meet me. Boy, it wasn't 30 minutes. I mean, that place was swarming. And that guy, he didn't even have a chance to get out of there. I mean, they swarmed with him, handcuffed him, took him out there and put him in the squad car and handcuffed him into the back seat. Oh, yeah. And he said, now what are you going to do with me? He said, well, we'll take you to the DNR office. And what they do with you, I don't want to know, don't want to hear. Don't care where he's at or where he went. We don't know nothing about him. When he leaves here, you are through with him, you don't mm -hmm. know him. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, let's keep it that way. And that's why we kept it, and I don't know who he was. Hmm. But Mark, they Mark said, Dunn, I was... Mark Dunn? Mark Young. Young, yeah. Mark yeah. Young, Papa. Uh -huh. Mark Young, the guy at Spring Mill? Yeah. That lives down there, that took over? Mark Young? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That the man you was talking about? What did you say his name was? Mark Young. Mark? Mark? Bart. Mark? Mark. M-A-R-K. Mark. Not hearing it. I've got to go ahead and get it fixed. I don't want to throw it. It's not picking up noise. It's too much chatterish. Uh. Mark Young. Or Bart. 
Mark. Mark. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Mark, Mark. I thought you said Mark. Yeah, the guy that was Mark, over, yeah, over yeah. Mark, he's still mm -hmm. working yeah. there. They were good people, I think but so. it's just like my mom and dad always said. Of course, they and my dad, grandpa, I mean, not my dad, but my grandpa, when my dad was going with mom, and he'd walk all the way from Knob Creek to Allen's Creek over where grandma lived. Mm -hmm. And they went to church together at the 16th Corner Tower. I mean, the 16th Corner Church up there. Mm -hmm. And that's where they met at, and he got to go with her, and they finally stayed together. And he worked, and he they said that he'd either walk or rode a horse from over there to Allen's Creek. Yeah, you kind of kind of ran pretty hot hot head to people. And Jasper, and boy, he got me in trouble one morning. Oh man, did he! And I don't know how in the world. That was him and uh, two Bartlett boys and a Mitchell and a her and there's five or six of them. Hmm. They was deer hut up there where the horseman camp was at, all hmm. back in there. Well, they got up there and they got up there somewhere along the road and and they said they seen the animal cross the road two or three times or they'd be driving along the road, see his eyes cross the road, and they thought it was a deer all the time. Hmm. So Jasper shot up there one morning. You got him a deer all right. A pony. Oh boy. Yeah, shot a guy, a kid's pony. And boy, he heard them shoot, and he said it was just breaking daylight, and they were still in bed. He said them kids jumped up and took off running out of the house. And there laid the pony out there across the road deep where they mm -hmm. shot a deer slug. And oh man, I got mm -hmm. a call, get there immediately. And I got up there. And boy, I mean, I know Dickie Kelly. Called my boy, I mean, not my boy, but my brother wasn't, but the one of the daughters mm -hmm. that they had up there, Lois. They called her Lois Kelly. And boy, they come out there, and I mean, they jumped all over me. And I said, there ain't a thing in the world I can do about it. I said, I'm just here. I, I, what you want me to do about it? Well, do something. He said, he's going to jail. And I said, well, I done, I done warn them. I said, they know I, what's going on. He said, well, when they'll be here. And I said, well, I said, the warders will be here to see what they want to do. That's up to them. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think? And I said, well, I don't have to think too much. I said, I got a tape right here, ready the old system, and I can go about everywhere I want to go around close. I said, I've had a radio jet and a 25 mile rating, and I can get in or out. And they said, Well, I said, you better be a call them guys and tell them to get in here. And I called one, so I guess like half an hour after they talked to me. And they said they'd already sent the guys out, you know, three car loads of them. And buddy, they took them to jail. Jasper and I don't know who all. Hmm. My sister, you talk about getting that for me. And she really got on me. Mm -hmm. They had to pay a fine. Jasper was your sister's husband, right? Of course, my sister's husband. What yep. can I do? I was there. They know me. I had my paper signed. They signed my name on the paper. Mm -hmm. Who was there to witness it? What could I do? I couldn't back out of it because I was a dead You're doing your job. Yeah, I was <laughs> doing my job. And boy, I'm telling you, Ruby, she liked to have a fit. And she had one girl named Sue, and that girl, oh, she was baby dead there. Anything she wanted, she got. And I don't know, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you get in time places like that. You close her right over here. He got me into trouble one time, and I'll never forget that. And him and two other guys, Brought the rifles and met me. And George Peachy and two other guys. And there's a guy shot a deer way down in here. They've done, I don't know, you ever been down Brim Holler? What's called Brim Holler? Don't know what big mound is? I don't think. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, down behind Melanie's. Yeah, big mound is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they shot a deer there mm -hmm. and they didn't have a tag. Mm. Well, 
and you come in, it was a 10 point buck deer. And you brought it in down there to a house. That's where they carried out at. They blowed it up, I guess, back home or do whatever they want to do with it. Well, anyway, brother, and uh, his neighbor seen him have that deer out there. Well, I guess he was nosy to see what it was, you know. Well, he didn't get no information. And he didn't stay around here long. They got rid of him. They were practically running more from the area. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he come up here to the house. He said, you need to go down to Ted Smith's. And I said, what for? He said, well, you'll find out when you get down there. Get in your car and go down there. Well, I had that little pickup truck, and I drove down there, got out. There was about three or four cars sitting there, people laying around on the ground, you know. And that deer was laying there just as plain as it could be. Mm -hmm. Nice deer, beautiful deer. And I said, see that deer there? He got that out of the wood and it's not tagged. Where's the tag in? You're supposed to bring that deer out with the tag on I said, well, yeah, you're supposed. I said, do it, do it, do it. I said, I, I probably done it and didn't do it. And I said, I've I, I been killed that thing too. Well, tell you what, you gonna put a tag on this before it leaves here. And I said, no, I ain't put no deer, it's not my deer. And I will not put a tag on it. Mm -hmm. Well, what are you gonna do? And I said, well, I said, there's gonna be some more officers here. I said, two more guys are coming. And what they do is up to them, they're right with me. And boy, they come driving in, they were really nice. I mean, they spoke and friendly to us, you know, talking. Walked over there and asked his boy, said, whose deer is this? That guy said, that's my deer. He said, where's the tag at for it? And he said, I've got it in my billfold here, but I haven't got it on the deer yet. And he said, and you got that deer and you ain't put the tag on it. He said, no, I didn't think I'd have to, because this is Forster. This guy, He's living here, and he said, this your deer or this your ground here, it probably belongs to the forester. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I don't know. Boy, it wasn't a half an hour, and here comes the bears. They come in there and survey. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, that boy's looking. That deer is two foot over on the government property. Oh, yeah. And he said, now, <laughs> he said, now what are you going to do about it? And oh, that guy turned him in. Man, I'm telling you, the clothes over here, man, he hated me after that. I mean, that really put him down low, you know. Yeah. But, there's places you just have to watch where you're at, what you do when you're there. And boy, you just get into it up to years. Yep. Wherever the kids does here with the place, that's where I'm dead and going, it's up to them. Mm -hmm. It was either in three different angles, different. And I said, now, I said, they may sell it and let the one of the grandkids live in it. I said, that's up to them. I said, it's their home. It's not mine no more. I got my home up at the cemetery. And I said, that's my place I'll be, and I'll not need this. Mm -hmm. And I said, whatever they do with the place here, it's up to them to do what they want to do with it.